Welcome back. Uh, today we are going to look at two different methods of biasing some tubes in a Fender Twin Reverb reissue. I have a new set of tubes that needs to go into this amp and I figured it was a good opportunity to show you two different methods. Um, I typically use this CompuBias, which is great. It's microcontroller based. Uh, it automatically reads the plate voltage and the idle current. Uh, and then gives you a readout in watts as well. Unfortunately, these are pretty expensive and no longer in production, so a little hard to get your hands on one of these. Whereas this style of bias tester, which just has the tube socket that goes in between your tube and the socket on the amp, and then plugs into a multimeter and has a switch for going between plate voltage and idle current, it's much more accessible. This is something you can get for really cheap. You can only test a single tube at a time, which can be a little bit problematic um, or, you know, requires a little bit more uh, fiddling around, I should say, or a little more time to test a full set of tubes. Um, but it does, it is cheap, it is accessible. You need a multimeter of your own to plug into, but otherwise a great tool. And so I wanted to show you guys how to use one of these as well as one of these, the differences between the two and our process for doing that. Here we go. So some precautions that you need to take before turning the amp on, you need to always make sure that you're hooked up to a load, whether that's the internal speaker, uh, or in my case, I'm hooked up to a attenuator, which is then going on to a speaker so that I can do some further sound testing. But this always needs to be the case. Anytime you're putting a signal into the amp, it, or if it's gonna be powered on, you want to make sure something is hooked up to the output that's an appropriate load for the correct ohms. Uh, another thing to take into consideration is if you're only dealing with a 50 watt tube amp, you're just going to have two of these tubes. Uh, or if you're dealing with a, a amp, maybe it's 30 watts and it's using uh, six V6s. If you only have two tubes, you just are going to test one or the other of the two. Now, if it's a four power tube amp like this guy, the Fender Twin, uh, your tubes are going to be arranged in pairs where it's the two on the inside and then two on the outside in most guitar amplifiers. There are a few exceptions, but those are pretty rare. So in our case, we're going to test one of the inner tubes and then one of the outer tubes when we're using the CompuBias, since that can test two tubes at once. Uh, for the single tube tester, we would have to then test one of the internal pairs and then let things cool down so that we can remove that tester and then move it to the other side. And if there's any discrepancies between the two, then we'd have to investigate further. Um, other safety precautions, make sure you are aware of the fact that there is a lot of voltage in an amp like this, so you can't touch anything on the inside when it's powered up. You really wanna be careful to make sure that you don't hurt yourself or shock yourself. Always be aware of that. It's good to have a healthy fear of the voltage that's inside these amps, but uh, if you are taking the proper precautions and working safely, then you should be okay and everything should be good. Okay, so first up, we're gonna use the CompuBias tool. You can see here we are plugged in through these cables, which then go to one of these two tubes. And again, we're gonna be able to test both pairs of tubes as they work in the push-pull amplifier. Um, this thing is really handy. If you can get your hands on one of these and you're doing a lot of biasing, it is worth the price, in my opinion. It will measure plate voltage, idle current for each tube, and then give you an estimate of the wattage. It does internal math for you so you don't have to do the math, although that is pretty simple. I'll show you how to do that with the other tester. And you can see for a 6L6 GC, which we have in this amplifier, we're looking for a range of 15 to 21 watts. And if that's off, we are going to make an adjustment right there. You can see there's a potentiometer on the other side. We could do it from the other side of the amp if we wanted, but right there is the adjuster. Now you can do this with the amplifier in the cabinet still. I've been doing some other work on this amp, and so I have it removed, and it's also a little bit easier to show you what's going on with it on the workbench. That's the only reason we're doing it this way. So everything's hooked up. We're gonna be safe to turn the amp on at this point. We have our load hooked up. So I'm gonna power this guy up and see what we get. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're at about 460 volts on the plates. The idle current is coming up. You can see our watts there. I'm gonna be ready to turn the amp off if that idle current goes way too high. I've already tested these tubes, but if we have a shorted tube, you'll see that current just start to really move up. And that's where an analog meter can really pay off for doing these initial startup tests. So I'm holding the camera with my left hand and then I have my right hand on the power switch just in case. But again, we're looking for 15 to 21 watts, as we can see here for 606 GC. And it can really pay off when you're doing these tests to let the amp sit for a bit. And by that, I mean about half hour or an hour and let the tube settle in. Sometimes the issue can pop up after things come up to temperature. One other note, your plate voltage will go down as the idle current goes up. So if we were to change the bias, we may see a balancing act between these two numbers, which again makes it take a little bit longer when you're doing these calculations by hand. Another thing too with these, there are uh, small resistors in the tube socket here that are allowing us to see that idle current. Uh, there's basically a resistor in that socket that puts the um, cathode, the negative side of the tube, it, it's between that and ground to then measure a current as a voltage across that resistor. So we don't wanna play guitar while this is hooked up, unfortunately, we can get a signal in there that would be more than that resistor can handle, which could cause some issues. Okay, so this looks pretty steady and we're actually at the low end of that 15 watt to 21 watt range. So I am gonna do a small adjustment here. Let's take a look what happens there. So again, I'm going to come over to this guy and I'll show you what happens here. Okay, and actually I've made a mistake. I believe this is the hum balance which changes the balance between the two tubes. This one here is going to be our bias. There we go. So going clockwise from my perspective lowers the wattage. It's reducing the idle current. If I go counterclockwise, and I'm just doing very small movements Okay, so let's see how settle, things settle in there. And that was maybe almost a quarter turn of the pot to make that large of a swing, just for reference. And you can see that both our plate voltage and our idle current move there. So we're gonna set, let this settle in a little bit and then uh, I'll let it cool down. And assuming there's no issues, we'll move over to look at the other type of bias probe. For our second type of bias meter, we are going to use one of these, which can be obtained from a bunch of different places. You can get these as kits. They're usually about in the $20 range. Um, and basically the same deal as on the CompuBias. It has a probe that then has resistors inside of it uh, and helps you measure the voltage at the plates as well as the idle current of the tube. Um, but you need a separate meter to plug into. So we're going to set this to voltage. We're on DC volts with the dashed and solid line there. You can see volts DC there. And we'll plug into these two connections. And now this is going to go in between the tube socket on our amp and the actual tube that's under test. And they make these with two or four probes as well so that you could test multiple tubes. Uh, they also make ones that have the same style of tester, but then it has its own built-in display, which is pretty handy. Um, if we were just using the single style like this, 
we would on an amp like this that has four tubes have to test one of these two tubes and then also one of these two tubes on this side. We're just gonna do one of the two sets since we already actually got everything biased up with the compu bias. Now you wanna be really careful that the keyway matches what's on the actual tube here. There's a little line here on the plastic of the base that lines up with a hole on this side. And do that for both the tube socket and the tube. Okay, and now we can turn things on and we'll see where we're at. I've got this set to the voltage first and we're gonna read what the plate voltage is as it comes up to power. Now again, I'm hooked up to a load with my amplifier to make sure that there is a load on the amp. I'm going into my attenuator. You could just as easily be connected to the speaker. Okay, so you can see we're reading about 400. This is gonna read it as a proportion of what's actually happening. So we're reading in millivolts. And then for current, we will also read in millivolts. Um, but what's happening there is there's a resistor inside the socket that is uh, a factor of 10 or one or 100. So it's basically turning our, and I we could do the math on this to figure out what it actually is, but it's turning our voltage or a voltage sensed across that tube socket uh, between the cathode of the tube socket and then also the ground to then give us a proportional current. So although we're reading 38 millivolts, this is actually representative of 38 milliamps in the actual tube. And then when we switch back, we see 456 millivolts, but really that's 456 volts in the amplifier. Now, in order to bias using this method, we're going to have to do some math, whereas the CompuBias did this for us. We are now going to have to figure out what an appropriate current would be at this point. So let's go ahead and grab a piece of paper and do that math, and we'll talk about how to move forward from there. Okay, let's take a look at how to do some of this math for basic biasing of a tube. We're looking at the data sheet for the JJ6L6GC2, which is the same as the their modern production 7027. Um, and what we're looking for here is the overall wattage of the tube. So we can see right here we have a value that's the limiting value. This is 30 watts, meaning the total wattage this tube could take before having a big time issue is 30 watts. Now we also see typical characteristics. So when you're operating this tube, you would typically operate it at about 17.5 watts. We're gonna look at both ways of doing this calculation in case you only have one or the other. Okay, so some pretty simple math. We're gonna see that power is equal to volts times current. So we're gonna be working with plate voltage and then also our idle current. And then the power will be one of these values depending on how we wanna do this calculation. Now it's important to note that we wanna have the tube biased for a certain dissipation. So typical values, if you want a little bit of grit, uh, that edge of breakup kind of sound, usually you want to bias for around 70% dissipation. Now in some amps, uh, like say, let's see, something like a Ampeg V4, um, or amps that are made to stay very clean, you may have a dissipation that's closer to 50%, or like 60% would be typical. And the payoff there is that your tubes will last a little bit longer, but you get a little bit less of that grit and grind that people like when you talk about power tube saturation. So if we are using the first value, the 30 watts, we're gonna have to accommodate for that dissipation. 
this value kind of accommodates for it already by saying the typical characteristic is to operate at about 17.5 watts, which is close to that 50 to 70% range of this. We could actually do the math by dividing 17.5 uh, by 30 to figure out what that actually is proportionally. Okay, I couldn't help it. I had to just go ahead and do that. And it is about 58% dissipation for that 17.5 value. So if you do want to tune your dissipation value, you may want to use this value instead. And we can see here we would do 30 watts divided by the 450 volts at the plate that we were seeing. And this may be like 455 or 440, depending on what current we actually adjust to. This will change when you change your current. And to get a range, I just plugged in a couple ranges here. So at 50% dissipation, which would be 0.5, we see that we would want an idle current of 33. Now, if we instead want to bias for 70% dissipation, we would take the same watts, the same volts down here, multiply by 0.7 for 70% and get 0 0.046 or 46 milliamps. So anything between that range is going to be nice and safe. And at that point, knowing that, we could adjust the bias and then play the amp a little bit and see what sounds best to our ears. We don't have to stick directly to these numbers, but anything within this range is going to be nice and safe for the tubes and for the amplifier. Now, if we instead want to use this value, our nominal or normal value for typical operation, we would take 17.5 watts, divide by 450 volts, and we get 0 0.038. So we can see we're kind of in the middle of this range, right? Which adds up to that 58% that I just calculated. So just to summarize, if you are tempted to try this out on your own, just be safe. Take the precautions that we noted into account. You want to make sure that you're not touching inside anything inside the amplifier. You want to make sure that you're always hooked up to a dummy load, which I disconnected. Uh, or to your speakers that are in your amp. Uh, there are pros and cons to all these bias tools. There are a lot of variations on this. You could spend 150 bucks on a Bias Pro Dr. Meter or whatever they're called uh, and have a four tube version of that. You buy one of these single versions and for like 30 to 50 bucks, or you could even get a kit that does it for you or that you build up for even cheaper and learn a little bit about the process. You could look for something like a CompuBIOS that's a more automated tool uh, and spend a couple hundred dollars. I think when I got them, it was about 300 bucks. I could be wrong. Um, and I think there's comparable things out there these days, even though those aren't being produced, or you might be able to even find a used one. Um, but either way, biasing your, your tubes, your power tubes, and your amplifier, if you are interested in taking on amp repair, this is a good place to start and a good thing to learn about. One other note for safety that I would recommend is if you don't have a situation where there's a potentiometer on this side of the chassis like we have here, if you're having to dig around in the chassis for these adjustments, it's worth investing in a ceramic screwdriver like this. This will allow you to, if you are making adjustments inside the amp and you happen to drop this, you will not short anything out. This is a non-conductive screwdriver and they're relatively inexpensive. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you feel like you're getting something good out of this, go ahead and subscribe. I'm putting out about three videos a week this, these days, so don't want you to miss any. Uh, but again, thanks for watching and hope you're having a good day.